So tonight, I want to con I'm really so appreciative of the National Partnership for Women and your 45th anniversary. I cannot believe that this is your very first Lifetime Achievement Award. So I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. I so appreciate all of the wonderful work that the Women's Legal Defense Fund has taken over its 45 years to help women and families. And I know that you started out as one name, you got a new name, but the name really just meant, though your name changed, your values and your commitment to an action-based agenda never, never changed, never, never wavered, and will never, ever stop. So for 45 years, you've really helped so many, and you've had an enormous impact for me. For me, you have a very special place. And my very dear friend, Ellen Malcolm, is in the room and helped emcee this event. At a recent book party for her, I called her a social innovator. I called her a social inventor because she invented Emily's List, a social invention that empowered women in a way that they could be donors so that we could begin to win statewide office. But Ellen helped, Emily's List helped me get elected, but the partnership helped me govern. From the very first day that I walked into the United States Senate, the partnership was my think tank. It helped me come up with the right ideas to do the right action, to put the right coalitions together to advance that agenda. And I said, though I was the first, I wasn't going to be the only woman in the United States Senate. But, for, but from 1988 till 1992, I was the only Democratic woman there. And during those years, we laid the groundwork and we fought many issues. We worked on many, many issues together and we paved the way for that next generation to come. But you have to have ideas. You have to have the background and the research to be able to do it. Good intentions are not enough. Bumper stickers are not enough. Rallies are not enough. You've got to really be able to have the people in the legislative bodies to carry it forward. And I will tell you, the partner was there. Policies, research well done, action and strategy. We would meet in my little conference room. Where did the ideas and policies and strategy come from? They came from the great founding mothers. There was Judy Lichtman. Judy Lichtman. And her partner, Marsha Greenberger, who also was there. And someone who worked for me and then went on to work for Planned Parenthood and the Breast Cancer Coalition, Joanne Howes, and so many others. Ideas, research, programs, so that we could move the agenda. And we did it, and in many ways, we reached across the aisle and we reached across the dome. It was the partnership, and it was the people that the partnership brought to me and to my very wonderful staff. You know that wonderful staff I have. You know behind me is a hell of a lot of we. There's Ann Lewis, there's Wendy Sherman, there's Nikki Heidepreen, there's Diane Thompson, there's Jenny, For Jenny, there's Carol Foreman. It's got a little cough drop up here. But these were there and we did it together. Do you remember that famous study at NIH, take a heart attack, um, have a take, take a aspirin a day to keep a heart attack away. It was 10,000 male medical residents, and not woman was included. Not one woman was included. I wanted to do something. Nancy Kassebaum wanted to do something. The women strategists that are in this room helped me, and we reached out across the dome to Pat Schroeder, Connie Morella, who's here tonight, <laughs> Olympia Snow. We went to NIH and we said, by God, you can't keep doing bad science, 
based on bad stereotypes and being who you are. And the day we pulled up, George Herbert Walker Bush gave us Bernadine Healy, and the world began to change. And all of the while, while we were working, and I was working hard to work on those big macro issues, the partnership was helping me come up with the strategies for the macaroni and cheese issues. <laughs> it's what Sylvia talked about. It's what Kristen Gillibrand talked about. What does it mean at the family level? What does it mean in the home? What does it mean in the kitchen table? How can we make a difference, not only in the federal law books, and yes, in the federal checkbooks, but what does it mean in terms of the families? You have before you at your table a list of many, many accomplishments that we worked on. But I will tell you, working on the women's health agenda, the way we work together, was one of my proudest accomplishments. I know that we saved lives. I know that we made such a tremendous difference. That time when we worked to get ourselves in the protocols at NIH, I remember a crotchety old senior scientist who said, well, I don't know if we can do research on women of childbearing age. And I said, why not? And he said, I fear that women have, you know, they're monthly. <laughs> and I said, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> he said, well, the literature shows that you all, you all have raging hormones. And I said, Sylvia, that voice you're familiar with, the reason we have raging hormones is because of guys like you. <laughs> Fortunately, fortunately, there are a lot of good guys. There are a lot of good guys at NIH, and there are a lot of good guys in the Senate. And I have to acknowledge them. One of my dearest and closest friends was Senator Ted Kennedy. And it was Ted Kennedy. And my other pal and partner, of course, was Chris Dodd, a great champion of family and medical leave. And, of, and Chris and Ted and Tom Harkin. So when we finally got ourselves in the protocols, working with Ted Kennedy and Tom Harkin, the good men of the Senate, we were able to establish the Office of Women's Health. And when we established the Office of Women's Health, we were able to increase breast cancer research we were able to increase breast cancer research over and over again. And then Dr. Healy called me and said, Senator Mikulski, I'm gonna do a story, uh, I'm gonna do a, a longitudinal study on hormone replacement therapy. I can't, you can't earmark and I can't ask OMB. What can we do? I said, we'll figure it out. Barb, Ted, Chris, Tom, the partnership, the strategist in this room, we figured it out. Dr. Healy got her hormone replacement story, a study. The study was done. The rest is medical history. It changed medical practice. It changed medical practice. And with that, we reduced breast cancer rates in this country by 12%. And when you ask, what did you all do? Working with the partnership, working with the, with the, the groups, but particularly led by the partnership. And how did you all work together? Just say we did work together. And you know what? We saved lives a million at a time. So when I look at this, I really take pleasure in all of the friendship and advice you gave me. But that was only one issue. Then along comes while we worked through the years when family and medical leave, the Clintons came to town, and it was the Clintons who came to town, and we were able to work on family and medical leave. They said we couldn't do it. Once again, I ran into crotchety guys in Maryland. One man said to me, I can't pass, you can't do family and medical leave. 
And I said, why not? He said, we won't hire women. We can't hire those fertile fillies. I said, oh my God. So I listened to him. And then when we had the public meeting, I said, I've been told by the leader of your organization that I can't support family and medical leave because people like you won't hire, and I used his words. He was never reelected, but I was. <laughs> But these, is the sign coming off? <laughs> the roof will come off in about 10 minutes. <laughs> That's that glass ceiling, move it out of the way. Here we are. But we did work on family and medical leave. And again, we continue to work on issue after issue. And then to our great pleasure, Barack Obama was elected. But before Barack Obama was elected, there was a terrible, we continue to fight for equal pay for equal work. We continue to fight for equal pay for equal work. And a gallant woman by the name of Lily Ledbetter took to the airwaves and again teamed up with the partnership, teamed up with the coalition of the groups in this room, and teamed up to work with all of us. And then she took her case to the Supreme Court she lost in the Supreme Court. Back it came to the Senate. And during George W's presidency, we lost the vote on the Senate floor. And that's when I said, as everybody left, and we were supposed to go away, we were supposed to be sad, we were supposed to have our heads down, and somehow or another, that doesn't work for me. And I went up to my desk and I said these famous words. Because during that time, HBO was running a story on the American Revolution. And there was my good old friend, Abigail Adams. And I said, listen, everybody, listen up. Abigail Adams, everybody's watching the miniseries. They all watch John, you know, good old John. He was in Philadelphia writing the Constitution where Abigail was running the farm, holding the family together, making sure they didn't go into debt, but he gets all the credit. But she wrote a letter that said, do not forget the ladies or we will ferment our own revolution. <laughs> and I said, that's what we're here to do. And we, the women of America, are not going to, this issue will not end with this vote. And I said, women, square your shoulders. Put your lipstick on. We're going to fight for the revolution. And we did. We went out and we fought the revolution. We made it an election issue. We made it an election issue. And then when Barack Obama came to the presidency of the United States. I was in the Senate. We now had a large number of women. We were in charge, and we moved that legislation. And I stood at the White House with Lily Ledbetter, the Speaker of the House, named Nancy Pelosi, and so many of you there. And the very first piece of legislation signed by the very first African-American president of the United States was to make sure we kept the courthouse door so that we women could have equal pay for equal work. And we need <laughs> to finish the job. What a time. But tonight is not to talk about history. We talked about the Affordable Care Act and more needs to be done. We spend more time on lawsuits than we do in doctor's offices. So we need to continue the fight. But as I've recalled some of these stories of history, I will tell you, I never in my wildest imagination thought that I would stay this long. I'm grateful to the people of Maryland for their continual re-election of me. And I'm grateful for all of the people who helped me serve. And I'm grateful for all the kind words that were said about me tonight, and even having a Twitter wall. How cool is that? <laughs> but when I look at Kristen Gillibrand, and I look at the other 14 Democratic women in the Senate, 
and also many of those Republican women that are pretty good and pretty strong fighters as well, and you know their names. Someone like my very dear friend, Senator Sue Collins, and others. The fact is, is that I feel good. I feel good because there is a new generation of women in the United States Senate who are ready to take up the fight, take up the cause, to be un unstoppable in their ability to do that. And I look at the men in this room and the men in the Senate. Before when I came, I had friends like Paul Sarbanes, Ted, Chris, and others that I mentioned, but I didn't have the majority. Now we have the majority because thanks to what you've done, you've not only changed the law books, but you've helped the culture. Men of quality, don't fear we women who seek equality. We are now all partners in it, in raising strong families, improving what our lives should be in the United States of America. So I feel real good. I'm not ready to write the final chapter, but I am ready to turn the page. But when I turn that page and cross that finish line, you need to know I will never forget you. Some of these dear friends in this room. Helen Keller, who though blind was one of our great visionaries, and she said, all you deeply love, you never lose. And she said, all that I have ever met has become a part of me. For all of you where we sat in these rooms and ate stale potato chips to come up with fresh ideas, <laughs> for all the hard work that many of you do in your own home, often on your own time and your own dime, I am so grateful for what you do. I'm grateful for you because each and every one of you, I know, already makes a difference in your own life. But when we work together, we can make change. So no matter who we are, no matter what role we play, let's all be social instigators. Let's be social instigators. Let's instigate every single day that we can.